But today we celebrate this beautiful feast of Pentecost, Christmas for the Gentiles, for all of us. For this is truly the time of manifestation of Christ as the Redeemer of all mankind, not just coming as the Messiah in order to free the Jewish people, but rather to save all mankind. As St. Paul reminds us in that second reading today, that the Gentiles now are co-heirs with the Jews to the salvation that comes through Christ Jesus. And so it's a, a gift of that wonderful grace of salvation that is given to each and every one of us. And it's a time for our own response to that grace, that invitation that is given to us of a deeper union with Christ. We are in some ways invited to identify ourselves with the wise men as they come in search of Christ Jesus. But there was a little piece that I read that I kind of thought was interesting. And it was written by a woman who said, I think there should have been three wise women <laughs> rather than wise men. And somebody said, well, why should there be three wise women rather than wise men? And so he says, well, first of all, women are not too proud for ask the directions. <laughs> if there had been three wise women instead of three wise men, they would have asked for directions much sooner and not from Herod. They would have arrived on time, helped deliver the baby, given some practical gifts like baby clothes, cleaned the stable, and made a casserole. <laughs> it's too bad there wasn't at least one wise woman in that group. But whether we are the wise men or the wise women, we are invited to recognize the manifestation of Jesus to each and every one of us. You know, the, the wise men, it says, were guided by the star. And they finally, in following the star, found to the place where Christ was. Each of us has been guided by stars within our life, in our life of faith. None of us has come to faith just on our own. We've all had people who have in some way been that shining light that has directed us towards Christ Jesus. That is the beautiful role that others have had in our life. And this Feast of the Epiphany is a time just to pull back and to think about who those people are within my own life. Who is it who guided me? Parents, grandparents, maybe a brother or sister, maybe it was a teacher, maybe a priest, maybe a friend. Who was it that was the star for you? the one who pointed the way to Jesus. And maybe it's from your time when you were nothing but an infant, a toddler, that that star was there for you. Or maybe it was a star that entered at another time into your life. But to recognize with gratitude those stars, those ones who have directed us to Christ. And at the same time to reflect upon the fact that we are called to be stars towards others, that we are called to be those ones shining that light of Christ into our world, into the eyes, into the lives of other people, so that they too may experience and find Christ Jesus. That is the wonderful missionary discipleship that we have, is being a shining star, in some way touching the lives of others as parents, grandparents, certainly to shine that light for children and grandchildren, for all of us to in some way allow that light to shine through us so that others may be brought to Christ Jesus. That is the beautiful calling that we have. And so it's with gratitude and commitment that we celebrate this Feast of the Epiphany. But it's also with a recognition that just as, the, as those magi came and offered gifts to the Christ child, so we too are invited to offer gifts to Christ. That we are called to come in a spirit of worship and adoration as they did. Not just on that one time of going 
to the stable in Bethlehem, but every time, every day, and particularly as we join together in the Eucharist, that we are invited to enter into adoration of God, become flesh, that God who continues his presence among us in the Eucharist, and to worship the Lord Jesus there in that simplicity of what would appear as just bread and wine, but truly his very self, his body and his blood. <coughs> and to bring gifts. Now God is a pretty hard person to buy for, since he has everything. But there's one thing that we have that God doesn't have, unless we give it to him. And that's the gift of ourself. It's the gift of our life. It's the gift of our love. And that's the gift that we are invited to bring to every Eucharist, week after week, yes, time after time, to bring that gift of ourselves and to place it upon the altar. The gift of our love, the gift of this past week, what we have done, what we have failed to do, but to place that upon the altar. I really like the new translation, it's not so new anymore, but the translation of the Mass, there's points of that I do not care for, but the one that I really like was with the change at the preparation of the gifts, where we say, my brothers and sisters, may the Lord accept my, gift, my sacrifice and yours, recognizing that at the preparation of the gifts, it's our gift, it's our sacrifice, that we're placing upon the altar, that we intentionally bring ourselves, as the Magi brought gold, frankincense, and myrrh, we bring the gift of ourself, the gift of our life, particularly this past week. For truly, we are priests who join our offerings to the offering of Jesus, that perfect sacrifice in the Eucharist. And so it's very deep within our spirituality to be gift givers to God, the gift of our very self. And finally, to re re recognize that the Magi, it said, went back by a different route. Every experience of Christmas and Epiphany that we have should enable us to, in a sense, go back to live our life in a different way, with a different attitude, with a different spirit, Again, not going in circles in our life, but truly going in that spiral of coming ever more fully into union with our God, of living more fully our identity with Christ Jesus, our Lord and our Redeemer. How blessed we are to know the love of a God who comes in simplicity to embrace us that we in turn may embrace him and come to the fullness of his life.